All right, God bless you guys. As always, here at HNLC Studios, we're going to be running some dual, uh, kind of some dual shows here. We usually run kind of two at a time as we get ready to roll in here at HNLC Studios. First, I want to thank you guys for joining us in here at actually uh, BTR Station. Most of you are tuning in with us now to our either speaker program. It's kind of everything is running at once. This is our morning show that we have here at HNLC Studios. Now, we're running off our BTR station, and we're going to be kind of moving some things here as we go forward. We're going to hear some music in the background uh, from actually BTR station, but uh, then we're going to actually be coming at you also through the actually uh, regular program on our actual YouTube, as well as our speaker program. So those shows are going to be running as we proceed to go forward. For those who want to call into our BTR show, which will take place as of right now, six shows as we're running right now along the Anchor program, as well as running with the uh, BTR program, as well as the Breaker program. All these shows run pretty much at the same time, and it's just something that uh, we do here at HNLC Studios, but as we get ourselves in position, for those who are listening in here at our actually BTR, I'm actually um, our Spreaker show, we're going to kind of pull you up a little bit and get you going here, and we thank you guys for coming in to the actually on the air show with our actually... Um, um, BTR program. As we notice in the screen here, we see you guys lighting up pretty good. We thank God for that uh, sound that's coming through our BTR show. But I said once before, for those who are calling into the show, we've got a number you want to call in. It's going to be 646-668. It's going to be 8746 uh, 8746. As I read it off the screen here, you can call in, listen in. Uh, you can actually go in as a monitor and listen in. Also, you can actually click in and ask questions as we get ourselves in position here. It's going here at HNLC Studios. I said once again, don't want to sound redundant, but it's a pleasure for you guys to join us here at the studio. This is actually 1030 program that takes place every morning. Most of you don't get a chance to view in this channel because most of the time the channels are running what's called pre-recorded. So, when I run them like this, they all kind of run simultaneous, like a clock. They all run. This particular station runs 24 hours, so um, you can actually tune into it anytime, 24 hours a day, whether it be the BTR station, whether it be the iHeart radio station, whether it be the um, SoundCloud, whether it be BT, uh, actually uh, um, Breaker station or the Anchor station. These are all stations available to you. They run 24 hours a day. A lot of the time, I'm not here at the M. Uh, but I do have these shows continually, uh, continually running. Father God, let's open up in prayer as we get forward. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you for this time, this moment. In the name of Jesus Christ, and now the Father God, touch the mouth of your priest as he bring forth the word to your people. Father God, this is a clear word, this is a creed word. It's always come from the kingdom. Lord, take me out and bring yourself in that I be your conduit. On today, as we go forth to hear what you have to say, that is coming for the kingdom of God. These things I speak not of myself, but the power of the Most High God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, Lord, amen. As, as I say, I'm always a casual person. I don't really, you know, need to uh, get into it. I mean, I can say, I, say, I, I dress you know, something. I can get on with the best of them. I'm just saying, I like being with you guys. I like being comfortable and uh, being on set with you guys. So let's look at a few things here. Let's go over to the book of... Um, Let's see what's going on here in the book of uh, uh, the book of uh, Mark. Let's turn to the book of Mark and let's look at some things right here. You know, get a little bit of a little bit of sadness here about 
some of the things that took place up here. Uh, never mind the sound. Let's see, we got sensitive mics in here. So you would hear those mics kind of, you know, any little thing I touch. You know, I like the weather dynamic. I could weather the other one, but uh, I like the damn the dynamics better. But I want to make sure we get something here. You know, we look over here. Let's turn the Bible to the book of Mark. Um, let's look at Mark. Mark chapter 8. And we got a few screens I'm viewing here because I got some other shows running. So as we go forward, let's, uh, let's kind of just stay focused on here. That's going on here. The Word of God declares and decrees over here in the book of Mark, uh, chapter uh, chapter 8. The Bible says, straightway, uh, he entered into the ship. And with his disciples, he came uh, to the park called uh, Delathema. Uh, Delathema. Uh, Delatha. You know, it's a kind of a different way. You, you know, uh, Del, they, some say Del Martha. You know, but Delathea, Delamartha, but it's a different name. But it was a particular island that was pretty much. Just want to give just a little biblical history right there. It's called Delathema Town, described as part of the Gospels of Mark, a place where Jesus actually um, sailed after miraculously applying loaves of the fish, and he fed the five thousand, or fed the four thousand. Some say five thousand, some of these books say four thousand. See, this is why you study. Some say he fed the five thousand, and then you got another one. I'm looking at his head, say he feed four thousand. So um, I guess it only had to do with the number. Once we think about it, it was the biggest fish fry we ever seen. But one thing about it, is it significance of the number, or is it the miracle that took place? That was the miraculous miracle that took place. Whether it Moses bringing three million plus people out of Egypt, the fact that the matter Moses went over there and he did what God has called him to do. When you end up doing what God's telling you to do, that's when the very miracles or the manifestation or the reality of what you're doing come to manifestation. You know, show me man that says he has faith in the work, and I show you man faith is dead. Everything Jesus translated through the uh, through the power of the disciples, uh, through the uh, Pharisees, uh, not the Pharisees, but through the disciples when they're here on earth. Uh, we talk about the book of Amos 3 and 7. The God said, I'm going to bring a word to the land that's revealed to the prophets. We understand that was in the Old Testament time, but now we look at Jesus Christ, who the word of God talks about in sundry times he spoke to the prophets. But those last times he spoke to his son, Jesus Christ. So when we look at the word of God and we begin to think about the word of God, are we really paying attention to what the Word of God says? Are we really paying close attention to what it's saying? Are we looking at uh, what we call the, the historical things? Are we looking at the power of what he done? Now, one of these particular verses said he fed 5,000. This is one of the common, uh, uh, Amy Clark commentaries. It said he fed 5,000. And the Bible said that he fed the 5,000. We're talking about Delathamia. I mean, this, that name over there when he got out of the ship, he came straightway to that particular part of that region, uh, Delatamia, uh, Delatavea. You know, it's a kind of a tongue twister, but it's some different pronunciations I have with my system, and it kind of works those pronunciations for me. And it says over in the Pharisees came to him, questioned him, seeking him uh, a sign from heaven, tempting him. You know, every time you see an unbeliever, they always want to show you, you know, I mean, show me. Show me something first before I believe. You know, the Bible says it's, it's blessed to him that believe and have not seen. And so sometimes we want to see stuff. And always we seek it for signs of something to see if it's to be of God or not. But the Bible tells me you should walk by faith and not by sight. That even when things seem impossible in your life, God is yet still moving and helping you to go forth and understand and realize the plan that he has in life is really more than what you can see. Kind of want to push over here a little bit more. I want to look at this particular uh, area of scripture here as we go down here. And look at some of the things over here. As I said once before, for those who actually call into the uh, uh, BTR station, you can call in. Um, we want to make sure you're going to get in here properly. And there's a number that I have up here. It's, it's rolling as of right now with the particular station. I want to drop this down a little bit so I can see you guys back there because i got a lot of phone calls coming in here. I want to make sure I'm staying in contact with those phone calls as you guys come in. It says once again, I'm going to get this number to you again. It's number 646 Six six eight. It's gonna be eight seven four six. Gonna get you right into the live show, and questions and answers or whatever you may have. The course of time you can call it and ask that prayer. It's another number you can call on the course of time, but that we're gonna get all that in position as of right now. But let's kind of stay on this particular area, dealing with this particular uh, work that's going over here in the book of Mark chapter eight. The Bible says straight away he entered to the ship, and he came uh, with his disciples, and he came to the other part called Delatania. And the Bible said the Pharisees in this particular 11 verse, it's almost that they sought his name. Almost, they really did. They sought to make an accusation against him. 
and of accusing them. If you say you're the son of God, it's kind of like the devil did. If you say you're the son of God, turn these stones to bread. You know, if you say you the son of God, just throw yourself off this mountain that you dash your feet against the stone. And whenever you run into unbelievers, they they, they always want signs. He says you 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 doctors are devils, you demons, you know, you always want a sign for something before you believe. He said, but it's it's faithful and it's great to one that believed but had not seen. And that's a great thing. That's how your faith comes in. We're talking about just walking in faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. The word of God decrees that over in the area of uh, Hebrews chapter 11. We walk by faith and not by sight. I mean, we don't have to have faith for what we can see. If we believe according to Jeremiah 32, 17, that God is a God of impossibility, then let's believe and put him on the point and let him say, hey, look, Lord, you said in your word that you should not go back void on everything you have said. But to me, it comes from the kingdom. I'm going to take these off just for a second. Just want to make sure all the shows are blending in and hearing what's going on here. Kind of hang these uh, over here for a second. I just want to lay them down here for a second. I just want to make sure. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to pop them on my side here. Just want to make sure my show was coming in okay. And I was getting the other shows. I can hear them coming in. But we talk about this particular word. As we look back over the scriptures, it said the Pharisees came forth and began to question him and seeking a sign from heaven, tempting him. Now, 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 if Jesus says he's the son of man, it ain't my problem if you don't believe. And that's what I said before. The word of God declared when Jesus came here on the earth, he said, I come to do the work of one who sent me. He came with power and representation of what he was doing was true for the, from his father. When it got all the different miracles, all the different healings that took place, there's no way and no doubt that we can say he ain't the son of God. The Pharisees knew that he was the son of God in the midst of all the things they'd done behind closed doors, but they still sought accusations to try to denounce him or diametrically oppose him, knowing that the things he was doing was impossible, that no man could do that but the son of God. And so their Pharisees came and seeking the process of uh, trying to denounce his work. And we kind of look over here, we've got to do a couple of different Bibles here. We're going to look at something over here. I want to go over to the, uh, uh, to, in the book of Mark chapter 8. Let's move over to the Amplified Classic. Let's look at some of the Amplified Classic at that particular 11th verse. want to get some, I always want to get good understanding about what we're looking at here. The book of God said the Pharisees came again and began to argue with him and question him, uh, demanding, uh, demanding of him a sign. Now, when we talk about the process of demanding the sign, you know, you know, th this is one of the things we get you to find out. You know, we, we're so critical as men and women of God, and we, we're so critical, just men and women, period, just not only just Christian, but anybody, period, to argue a point about whether it be true or not. Matter of fact, a lot of sentences that takes place, we look at different crimes that take place around the world, the media, the media, excuse me, has already uh, pretty much uh, gave them their sentence. You know, they, they put polls up, like in the old days when they had to, uh, whether men be guilty, whether they be not guilty. If you look at the translation and how it's going, it's the same thing they've done in the old days. When the majority cross said guilty, and the other said save them. If the more majority said guilty, then they was gonna they gonna put their brother on the guillotine and put a rope around his neck. So they was actually sentenced before they got in the court, and the judge was already persuaded that what he was gonna do anyway. So the Pharisees already had made up in their mind, despite of some of the miracles they saw Christ do, they wanted to hold their positions. As being man of God, or being people in position of having rank over the end of women of God, because they felt once they lost that rank, you know they're going to be they were actually going to be denounced, because really they already was denounced, because people begin to look at Christ. I mean, they look at the they saw the work that he was doing, they saw the Pharisees in their suits and their robes and rings and all these things, the large celestial speech, but they weren't producing no power. Jesus over there saying, "Look, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head." So we understand that even in Jesus came in the midst of not having a whole lot of things, the Pharisees knew because they constantly argued against him. Whenever you find an individual that's constantly arguing with you and trying to make their point clear, watch out. Because the word of God says it's not for debate. It's for us to be able to reason together. And when we think about that, we got to look at it. Every one of us, every one of us has sinned. The Bible says though all of our sins were like Scott. He proved that in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2 said we all was in our trespasses and sins. We all walked once the course of the world. So we all had something that was in life that wasn't right. But when you get a little bit of knowledge, you begin to knock down your brother and sister. And this is one thing you got to think about team. Team is never one individual. Whenever you have one team member, they can't do it all. And if they do try to do it all, they come a disruption in the group in which they're in. So they want to get rid of that group. Good or bad, the team may substance uh, substance loss, but we better get rid of the headache and move on with peace. 
to know we can come together and solidify ourselves to move forward in the particular uh, arena that we're working in. Let's, let's get this again. Let's look at this kind of over in the, what you call the Common English Bible. Go over to the 11th verse. Going to look at variations of the Bible in here. Just kind of get some, you know, good understanding. Now the Bible said the Pharisees showed up and they began to argue with Jesus. They said they began to test him. They asked him for a sign, you know, from heaven. In other words, they wanted to know, were you the one? See, they already had signs. You know, they already knew that he was doing a powerful work. Excuse me. They already knew that Christ was doing a powerful work because they saw the, they saw the very miracles. They heard about all the different miracles. What about the issue of blood? And this is what we're talking about chronological order. And I was talking about one of the apostles over in New Jersey. We're talking about chronological orders. When it came to Jesus in this particular sense, was the miracle taking place before this or after this? Well, does it matter? Well, when Jesus came on the earth and was doing his earthly ministry, it was miracles whether they before or after. He still did the work. He still proved the fact that he was the Son of Man. And that means he came to save us from the very sins in our world. Even to the myth that he was sacrificed, he still did the work, proclaiming and declaring that he's going to go to the Father. And matter of fact, he gave us a greater revelation. He said, not only would I do the work while I'm here, but he said, you're going to do greater works to all them that believe. And declare the creed according to his word that everything he, he, he proceeds, excuse me, God, the mouth of God, shall go forth. We look at the Old Testament scriptures. We look at uh, Numbers 23, 19 to 21. God makes a, uh, a statement himself that he's not a God, that he should lie. Everything that God had did through his apostles, through his prophets, even through you that had the faith to believe, God said he will perform it complete. That means his word won't go back void, but it's going to accomplish. It's going to do everything he declared to be. The only if you believe. It's only to the believer. So when you come with unbelief, the word of God declared they came, they seeking an accusation against him, tell him, you'll show us a sign. I mean, it's not like you, what is, what is the brother's name? Uh, what, what That brother over there was performing all the miracles they talk about. Over there, Sam and the Salsa. See, he showed them tricks and things. See, people show you tricks. Tricks come in all shapes, forms, and fashion these days. I mean, it come with gimmicks. It come. I mean, it's just a whole lot of stuff going out there that you see. But you got to discern stuff through the Spirit. That's what the Bible says, according to the book of Galatians. Walk there in the Spirit. Did you not fulfill the lust and the desires of the flesh? Because the flesh will pick up something that it got appearance to look good, but it's not of God. It got a persuasive sound and weight that it twists and turns its words to make you feel. It's kind of like a person out there that's, um, how you say it? They, they hustling. They hustling. They're going to do everything to make that hustle. I remember <laughs> I remember when I was young. I mean, it's an old game. Most of you probably remember. They used to get the peanut shells and all that stuff, you know. And all the time they knew it wasn't nothing new. They never there. But they hustled you out of your money, you know. Give me five dollars. Which one is under? You know, like, you know, nobody used to do that. Boot them little peanuts around it. Which one is under? Yeah, they had all kind of gimmicks. The same thing they did with Simon the Sorcerer, and the same thing the Pharisees were so used to seeing all these type of things, and they was okay with it because they just took the Torah and jacked it up, and so they believed that the laws they made diametrically against Moses' law. They took Moses' law, and just twisted it all up. They had to let it. They had the law. They just turned to what whatever fitted them. It was good for them. Like the word of God declares in the creeds, I believe it's over in the book of Hebrews. And if it serves me right, the Bible says you put you put weights on the backs of the people. You put laws and rules on the backs of the people, but you don't lift a finger to help now one of them out. And that's the same thing with us when you look at the modern day time. We put levels of things on people and we look at them if they ain't got what it takes to get an old forth from the kingdom of God. If you ain't got this, you ain't got that, you don't go here, you don't have that, then you're not in the race. You're not capable of of being a part of the work of the kingdom. But Jesus never said anything like that. The Bible said that whosoever will, let him come. And when God gave you a gift from the kingdom of God, it didn't come from man. It don't matter whether they approve you or not. Jesus made that very accusation in a sense over in the book of John chapter 14. He said, I don't care whether you believe me or not. He said, the Father is in me and I'm in the Father. If you don't believe me, watch the work. Matter of fact, John chapter 14 through that 10th to the 11th verse, on down to the 12th. He makes a very strong point. The Father's in me. And the Word of God talks about in Philippians 1 and 6. If I begin a work in you, I'm go it doesn't matter what they think about you. I'm going to be the one that's going to perform that work complete until the day of Jesus Christ. You don't need to look to the left or the right. You need to focus in whatever it's God has called you to do. Let's look at something right here. Let's go down here. The Word of God says over in this particular area of the uh, 12th verse, and we look at this process in the 12th verse, and the Bible says the signs deeply in his spirit. Now, in other words, he, he's kind of saddened. He, he, he kind of shied. He was deeply in his spirit, and he said that, uh, that uh, this generation seeketh after signs. And, and notice what he's saying. He was saddened in the spirit, 
He was actually shamed, really, in the spirit. As a matter of fact, let's look over in the Amplified Version. Let's get a deeper meaning of what he said over there in the Amplified Version. The Bible said he groaned. He groaned with despair. And uh, Wow, can you believe that? After all the things that they had seen happen, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, uh, the kids probably been healed, people around have been delivered, uh, all kind of leprosy taking place. All these miracles we saw in the Word of God. Doesn't matter whether it took early or late. It was a miracle. They heard about him during the course of the time he was there. They knew he was doing powerful work because they wasn't doing anything but handing out laws and rules and regulations. Don't do this. Don't do that. Do this. Wash your cups this way. Wash your glass that way. But Jesus came on with a whole nother level. He came to a whole nother level. Am I in there with anybody? So you got to be able to move on another level. It's more than just signs. It's more than just you having oratorical performance. Baby, you got to be able to move something. It was an old song back in the day. Say, baby, you got to move something. And when you move something, you will understand and realize that when God speaks to you, that thing is going to happen right then and there. Am I helping somebody? The Bible declares according to Psalm 46. He said, look, I'm a very present. It ain't because what he's going to do. It's what he's already done. When God puts a word in your life and tell you it's going to happen, baby, you can count it and take it to the right. It's, it's going to happen. But the disbeliever, well, well, I, 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 well, well, how would I know? What you mean, how do you know? God said, if you can just believe, that's the how would you know, if you can just believe, look here, that all things are possible to the believer. The word of God declares according to Jeremiah 32 and 17, he said, but my stretched out arms, look at here, look at here, I created, he's talking about a creator, designer, engineer, I created the heavens and the earth. He said, look here, is there anything too hard for me to do? Man is always limited in his ability because he want to reason them things. He just can't go ahead and just believe it because he got a reason. It don't work out. That's why the word of God says in the book of, uh, what is it, Isaiah? Oh, the Isaiah 55? He said, for my ways, your ways. My plans, your plans. My thoughts, your thoughts. He's talking about a distance that you can't even fathom in that very thing. Paul talks about the same thing in the book of Corinthians. I better slow down here because I'm going I'm to get it. You know, I get it. I ain't got time to deal with all this stuff. All this so-called you, you, Christians, we, you, you, you beating this one down. You're ganging it with a, with a mob group over with your forks and sticks and knives, and you want to go to him and rush and beat him down. Call him a liar. Call him a false prophet. But you yourself don't understand that you was Ephesians too also. How I get to the point you get so high and mighty, you think you're better than them. What does God say in any man to be without sin? I dare you to pick up a stone. If you keep on picking it up, then you're going to find out that the word of God said over there in the book of Galatians chapter what? 5 and 14. Really 5 and 15. If you bite, kick, and devour, be careful. Karma is a bad thing. You be careful and you understand that all of our sins were like scarlet. We all had something in our life that we did. Now what the devil does, and now you got to hear, oh, you're going to get this. What the devil does, see when God, when you begin to be able to read the word of God in the book of Romans 10, 8, and 9, the Bible says, for what sayest thou? I, 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 know I'm, I know I'm out of the way, I'm not, but I'm on this. I'm on this. The Bible says, what sayest thou? He said, the word of God. Where is it? It's near you. He's talking about right there in your mouth. The Bible says, that's, that's what Proverbs say in 18. Say, that's where the life, this is where the life and death is right here. The Bible declares that in the book of James, if you can't rule that thing, it's like a deadly fire. It pronounces a world on fire. It's a, it's a fire starter. But the word of God said, if you know how to tame the tongue, which no man can do, the Bible said you shall live. But it's got to be tamed through the Holy Spirit. Then the Bible said the greatness in you is that's got to come out of you. When the Pharisees came to Jesus, when he came off the fields in the Luke with his disciples in the book of Luke, they came off the fields and one of the disciples being there, one of the disciples plucking the grain. They was a little hungry. And then that Pharisees, like right here, they found an accusation to come against him. Well, we got him now. Your people eat the food and pluck the grains without washing their hand. They was in a cup style, set this way, do this way, wash the plate that way. All these traditional things, man-made religion. That's what I'm saying. They are coming at you with their pitchforks. They are coming at you with all kind of education and things of persuasive words. But them themselves must have forgot where they come from. The Bible says you can't forget. He said, lest you forget, lest it be any one of you that you may fall. You got to have more love for people and what they're going through and dealing with in their life because you once was there also. Now, anybody got to see you? Oh, see, we like to twist the world. Or, or, or you or you going to hear this one. See, we like to take the world and we want to switch up. I ain't got to stay there. Nobody never said you got to stay there. But look here, how we arrived, 
Had anybody arrived, I don't care how much you got, how many alphabets you got on your name or behind your name, how many pieces of paper you got hanging on your wall when they walk in your office. The Bible said all that's going to perish. What's going to really find out about you is the gift he gave you. Take it back to the book of Matthew 25. Go to the book of Matthew 25, look at 14 in that 15 verse, when he declared that he came from a long journey to give gifts to who? Servants. He didn't say nothing about the apostle. He didn't say nothing about the prophet. He didn't say nothing about the evangelist. He didn't say nothing about the pastor teacher. He said servants. Matter of fact, Joshua was in a position before he even became a servant after taking up a time for Moses after the word of God declared that my, 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 my preacher, my pastor Moses is now dead. My minister Moses is now dead. Now take this here here and go over this here Jordan. If we understand the first battle he came into, one of the first battles he came into, one of the first biggest battles he came to, he came over to Jericho. And when he came to Jericho, the Bible said before he went over to Jericho, the Bible said there were some rituals that took place before he got over there to Jericho. Before crossing the river, he had to circumcise the people. But when he got to the point, he laid the rocks and went across the other side. The Bible said this here people hadn't been circumcised yet. When Joshua began to do what God called him to do to get the people to the other side to receive the blessing that will look like a stone that was impossible to get through. God said, we're going to penetrate that thing. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a harlot inside to get you what you need. I'm going to use an unusual thing that don't even look like it's solidified. That's why you got to understand, you can't say that about anybody. The Bible said that woman was a harlot, but God used that what seemed to be unusual. That's why he said, I take foolish things, and what I do, I confound the wise. Let me get back over here, because I get to moving on you in a minute. The word of God declares the word right here. He said, he, he, he charged them, saying, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Now, understand that a lump of dough, just a little bit, it call, if, if leaven is not in the bread, and let's get this, if you don't put leaven in bread, it's flat. Most of them say there's the type of leaven they had to put in the bread. Well, they didn't put in the bread during the course of time of Pentecost. They ate the flat bread. Most of us go to some of the Sonic stores and places we like the flat bread. Well, it does taste good. But the Bible says just a little leaven can cause yeast to expand. Just, just think about that. He said just a little leaven. When Jesus declared for his disciples, beware of the leaven, be, beware of the trickery. Beware they persuade a word that sounds good in or talk that'll twist you and talk you, just like the devil. He, he came to Jesus, well, 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 we'll jump off this mountain, we'll turn these bridges of stone. If you, if you, if you say you're the son of man, as if you say you're the son of man, you know, cast this and do this, do that. He, he making all these things like the Pharisees, show me signs. That's what the devil did. He wants Jesus, show me that you're the son of God. I mean, do this, do that, do all these things. He'll put temptation before you. But the word of God declares that when he went over there, Jesus warned his disciples after having them great teaching. He said, he said, look here. He take charge and he said, take heed, beware of the Pharisees, the leaven of Pharisee and the leaven of Herod. Matter of fact, look out for the leader. He's the one that pronouncing all this thing to go forth. In fact, all this stuff we got going on right now, all these laws been through in places. Some of the greatest deception that some of these rules have been in place. And y'all know what I'm talking about. It's going to be some of the greatest fall of this land if we don't come back in and do what we're supposed to do as being man when we got to stand firm and come together to be as one. We don't need to be divided. We don't need to be in competition with each other word or this, that, and the other. See, everybody like names and titles. Oh, let me help you on that one. Sometimes you want a name and title, but you can't perform nothing. You just want the name. You just want the title. You want something to make you look good before people. And that's the same thing Jesus said about these Pharisees. Be, look, be level of these cats. Don't take everything they're saying. Don't, matter of fact, don't take nothing they're saying. Because you have been taught well. As you go out, it's been, I got to get out of here. As you've been taught, it's been a man and woman of God. When you go out into these particular regions and areas, Judah, Samaria, or whatever it may be, understand your teaching. Understand soundness of your teaching. The Bible says you got to have sound doctrine. Sound doctrine, not only just through the letter, but through the spirit. That's why you got to pray before you go that God will lead you in all truth. That's the paraclete. That's the one that's got to be in you. When you wake up the sleeping giant that's in you. When I say you got a sleeping giant, the Bible declares according to the book of what is Jeremiah 1 and 5, created, designed, before you come out of your mother's womb, I called you. Now, I, that, that, they know flesh called you. Flesh can't call flesh. It might happen somebody. He said, before I called you, I called you, a creator. I called you to be a prophet before the nation. I engineered the gift in you. 
And I declare that if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of my righteousness, then all of these things will be added unto you. The Bible says, according to Psalm 84, there's no good thing will I withhold from those. See, he puts a complete in terms of that's going to be some devils. There's going to be some intermediate. There's going to be some cold, lukewarm, and hot. Just okay, them in between, I'm going to spit them out. I'd rather you be cold or hot. Let me know which side I'm going to deal with you on. Because if you want it on the right, left side, okay, we already know where you're going. You like that way? Go on over there. Read Psalm 73 with that one of David. David tell you, it looked good when I got out there. But my feet almost slipped when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. You can see some things that look good from a physical standpoint of view. But I'm going to tell you something, man, what we've got. Everything don't always appear as it seemed to be. It, no, it got a look like it's got a facade. The nice home, the nice car, the nice job. But man, what we got, you go inside some of these places, if you can be the fly on the wall. It's tore up from the floor and you need to check up. Ain't no peace in there nowhere. It just look good. All kinds of havoc is killing them. Some of these people killing themselves just to keep these churches together. God never told them to keep. They might have they're having heart attacks, falling out, strokes, all kinds of cancers in their body. Because they're trying to put things together from a business standpoint or a carnal standpoint of view that God never existed to put together. The word of God declares when you look over in the book of what is it, uh 1 Corinthians, that third chapter, after he got on dealing with them down there in that third verse. He going on that third chapter, and he come on up there, and he talks about the process. There's no foundation that no man can build that which is Jesus Christ. What is your foundation? The foundation, first of all, is your confession. You can't do nothing with God without a confession. You got to admit that you a sinner, that you were born in sin, and with the sin that's in you, even when you was Ephesians chapter 2, you got to be able to deliver. So you can't walk over the top of your sin. And then you come, you come and you denounce everybody else who may have sin in them. You, you can't do that. You can't be a hypocrite. God don't want you to be like that. The Bible says you ought to strive peace for what? All oh, men. When well, that way, all men will see Christ. And that's what you got to look at it. Every one of us done something. Boy, if that feeds, that feeds to tell you about yourself. Let me, let me just creep over it before I get out of here. Let me creep over to the book. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Let's just, just jump on Ephesians right quick because I want you to see something in Ephesians. I know I got to go. My time is pushing. I know we're on this BTR station. But I think you guys for joining me on my BTR station. What's my speaker station? All these stations are running. This information is clearly uh, given to you. Uh, it's not no charge in it. If you want to send a seed to this particular ministry, you can do it. I mean, but we still got to move forward. But I'm telling you, it's good soil over here. It's good ground over here. Let's look at Ephesians right quick. Let's make some real good understanding about the book of Ephesians, not looking at it from what somebody said from a historical point of view. Let's put it in your point of view, where you are and how you going through stuff. We always want to look at things. We want to put all this different area about what were the fees was doing, what the people of emphasis was doing. What well, maybe they was doing these things to make an example of what you need to do in the day you are in. You know, they did that back then to show that how you need to do. You know, even though they was going through changes and challenges back then, and they talked about owing through the book of Ephesians and by really just arming up and being protected by Christ, well, God is telling you the same thing. But first, we've got to understand that we all come from somewhere. Amen? No, you don't want to hear me. You, you, you think it's, it's about, you want to get some numbers. You want to get some BCs, some documents, some historical things. You want to read all these books. And the Holy Spirit says, it's right there in your, it's, it's, it's already in you. It's near you. It's right there in your, it's right there in you. It's right in your mouth. When you, it's right here. If you confess it. Then God said, I will, look, sometimes the power of the Holy Spirit, be, I mean, sometimes I'll be praying. It'd be like, sometimes I'll just sitting there praying. It'd be like another man sitting there talking to me. But sometimes, and most of the time, when he's talking to me, it ain't for me to give to somebody. It's for me. It's really for me. Because I got to come before God's people and get them. We always think we got a word for somebody. No, he's talking to you. He's talking, he's talking to, it's to you. First to you. And then to them. If you can't control the first direction, it's like a play on the field. The assignment and the play and the route was given to you. I didn't give it to your opposing team. I gave it to you. You run the right first, test it, and see if it be of God. And then when it works for you, and then you give it out to somebody. Quality goes in before the name goes out. The Bible said when you was in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible said when you was quick in your trespasses, sin, everybody was. Go to read what it says over there in the book of uh, Galatians. It makes the same thing, same accusation. If any man think of himself as being something not, he don't. Go to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, talk about how the 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians only deal with the maturity. There's a lot of people still immature in the body of Christ. We keep on getting stuck on this letter stuff. And ain't, ain't wrong, but it, 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 that's fine. But the Bible says it's something in this that's deeper. It, this only brings you to the surface of what God wants to take you deep into. That's what the letter does. You study that God gives you visions, dreams, revelation, information. 
That's why he said that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. When God gives you something, you can't get it from a book. I guarantee. Show me where everything they got. See, they had to get it from God to write the book. And God said, behold, I will do a new thing. The same thing I've done with them, I will do with you. You keep running around pronouncing letters. And God said, okay, what, what, look what Paul did. What, what, you worry about what Paul did. What you going to do? You worry about what Ezekiel done, but that, what what are you going to do? What's your work? What footprint are you going to leave when you leave here? Go back to the book of Ephesians. The Bible says, you was quick when you were trespassing sins. In the past times, you walked according to the course of the world. That's the book of Isaiah when we try to come together and reason this one. All of us had sins. You go back to the book of Romans, chapter 3, that 10, 11. The Bible says, what, what? Are we better than now? Certainly not. For we all have become what? Unprofitable. You go on down to the 23rd verse, he said, we were all falling short. That's if you read uh, Romans 3 properly. Romans 3 tells you, we are all unprofitable. Ephesians is telling you the same thing right here. That when you get so high and mighty that you have arrived, that's when you lost it. Just when you think you got it right, you're wrong. Just when God started getting, just when, now I ain't going to say God. Just when you start getting a little bit of cars, a little blessings, a little money, you think you're right? I'm telling you, man, the woman of God, you ready to hear me and hear me good. The devil will come and hit you with something and knock the wind clean up out of you. Because he wants you to give you, he want to put all this stuff before you. Now, if it be of God, then God's going to protect you and lead you and understand. Because as you be mature in what you're doing, you're going to know that in order for you to hang on to what you got, it was number the God that gave it to you. See, with all the blessings, the Bible said the blessings of the Lord, it make a risk. It depends on who's blessing you. That the world can bless you or God can bless you. But God said, when I bless you, can't no man take it away. So you know it be of God. Maturity-wise thinking, when God bless you, you continue on praying. You don't lay off. I'm going to stay home and wash my new house. I'm going to clean my new house, cut my new house grass. I'm going to go on a nice vacation. We're going to miss church. Ain't nothing going to take your family on vacation. I'm going to that too long. I mean, I ain't nothing wrong with it. I don't feel nothing wrong with going doing all those things. But you're going to find yourself, you're going to find yourself, I think my BTR is cutting off on the home take a minute. Look. You're going to find yourself pushing off. Okay, we got 30 seconds. You're going to find yourself pushing off. In the book of Ephesians, read the book of Ephesians. We got to get out of it. We got to go. We, but but y'all know I, I come at you. I'm, I'm get, trying to play with you. I mean, I'm, you know, you can say what you want. It, it, it really matters. What, it don't it really matter what you say about me. I'm like, Jesus, I come and do the work of the one who sent me. It doesn't matter if you gang with your friends, your partners, there, and say, well, he did. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. But all I can say, people who, people who talk about you, people keeping their mouth on just watch their life. Just, just watch their life. See what it'll become. Just, 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 you keep putting your mouth on them, folk, then we're going to find out what you're We're going to find out. You're going to find out quick, especially over here. You're going to want to burn up. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to hear a rumor, I guarantee you. You keep putting your mouth against people talking about folks, then you're going to find out. Treat people with, strive peace with all men. With that, with, they say, without that, no man can see Christ. Get along with your brother and sister. And understand that God's plan for you is really more than what you can see. God bless you. God keep you. I'm going to sign off for my actually here, um, my actually YouTube show. I'm going to pull out of there with you guys. And hey, look, farewell. God bless you guys. We love you. Thanks for joining with us. If we end that show, we're going to come over here to the actually uh, Spreaker show. And we're going to pull out of that particular show as well. And we thank God for y'all being with us here on our speaker program. We're going to run your music here just a little bit before we drop off there. But all you guys are with us on our actually um, um, blog talk show. It's always a pleasure for you to be with us as well. We want you to continue to join us, be a part of the work we're doing here at HNLC. We love you guys. We have no other regret but to continue to keep the love and faith of God as we go forth and believe the plan of God. It's really more than what we can see. It's, it's truly an honor and a blessing for you guys to be in with us and the work we're doing here at HNLC as we continue to climb the ladder doing things in phenomenal. I want to give a shout out to my good friend uh, Steve and Joyce Lazar out in Arizona, uh, Yahshua Ministries. And uh, that's why I say pray for the Jews and pray for Israel. Pray for them. Keep them lifted up in prayer. And if we don't do that, and then that's something wrong. Because that's, that's God first chosen. How are you going to forget the mother? And I'm just speaking in terms of how you forget the mother and then talk to the son. Uh, you know, that's crazy. You, you're going you, you gonna to listen to the nephews and nieces or whatever that put you put the, put the, the man down. You're going to you put the father down or the mother down. And you're going to listen to the... the, the uh, anyway. You're going to talk about the father and mother, but then you're going to talk to them about them. Man, I, I, sometimes you don't even know how to put this stuff because God will tangle that stuff all up. How can you talk about a man's father and mother, like, have their own son or daughter, 
you talking about them to, about their own father to them and then they believe it hmm. and the woman of God is a blessing for you guys to be with here at HNFC Studios it's truly an honor to be in your presence I thank God for you and all the work you guys are putting in hey look go to my website harvestmanchurch.com we love you you got to sow seeds to this ministry and it's a blessing for you